Hello, everyone, and welcome into Coach Craig Sports. This is the CFL DFS video for week number 21. It's the final week of the regular season. It's going to be an interesting week for DFS because all these games essentially do not matter. So they're going to be seeing a lot of backups in these games. Going to have to get a little bit creative here and there. Uh, we're going to try to break it down as much as we can. I've looked through every single depth chart. That's why this video didn't come out on Thursday. I really wanted to get the depth charts on Friday for the Saturday games as well. But uh, without further ado, we're going to kind of break down my sheet. Uh, should be a pretty interesting one. Like I said, these games really don't have much of an effect since the playoffs are completely set at this point in time. So we're going to start with the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Zach Kolaris did not practice all week. He technically was listed as questionable. He's listed as the third string quarterback for this week. So Drew Brown will get the start. I like him as a pay down option at $6,500. Potential cash game option if you want to get there this week. There should be plenty of money on the table with a lot of these backups playing this week. Kind of the surprise for me is that Brady Olivero is still listed as the starting running back. I don't think he gets too much run in this game, so we might see some Johnny Augustine. We might see some Greg McRae between slot back and running back. So McRae is kind of my favorite one out of those two. I do like him as kind of a $3,000 pay down option, a guy that could get a little bit work as you know a slot back as a wide receiver, but also get some touches in the run game as well. Then in terms of wide receivers, Nick Kaminsky and Dalton Shane both out this week due to ankle injuries, but probably just resting either way. Uh, so we could see a little bit of Rashad Bailey getting a little bit more action here. Drew Walter Ziski would be my favorite GPP play of the bunch, $5,900. But if you want to get to Rash some Rashid Bailey, I understand that as well. You know, maybe they get Janorian Grant a couple of extra snaps on offense since he doesn't typically play on offense too often, but they don't want to get him hurt in terms of the punt return game as well. In terms of the Blue Bombers defense, they're $5,100 going against Calgary. It's a decent matchup. So kind of a GPP option there. All defenses are going to kind of be in play this week since, you know, a lot of teams are playing their backups. It's going to be just kind of a little bit hit or miss just in terms of everything. So pretty much if it's a defense, you can play it this week. Then in terms of Calgary, Jake Mayer is still getting the start. So when you look at the slate in totality, he's probably one of the better quarterbacks starting just because there's a lot of backups on it. $9,200 price tag is not bad whatsoever. But, you know, they could also pull him out of the game, give Tommy Stevens or Logan Bonner a little bit of run maybe in the second half of the game as well. So just kind of temper your expectations there. Kadeem Carey is out at running back. I do have Peyton Logan listed as kind of GPP question mark. He was a little bit banged up with his hamstring injury once again. But him and Dedrick Mills should get most of the carries if you want to roll either one out this week. Should be fine there. Then a Reggie Bagel today wide receiver was not listed on the depth chart, so safe to assume that he's not playing in this game. Luther Haka, I can't pronounce his last name anyways, but $2,900 GPP pay down option. He would be my favorite from this receiver bunch. If you want to play Mark and Michelle, you could do that at $7,700. Definitely going to be a lot of money out there on the table either way. And then once again, that Stan Peters defense GPP option, you know, going to get some of the backups for Winnipeg should be all right matchup, but it could still be in favor of Winnipeg either way. Moving down to the Hamilton Tiger Cats, we have Bo Levi Mitchell getting the start. I consider him a GPP option. He's listed as a starter. Matthew Schultz is not even listed on the depth chart this week, so seems like they're resting him for the playoff game. Uh, we could see a situation where Bo Levi plays like a half, and then maybe Taylor Powell comes in at, for the second half, so that just keep that in mind. But I like the upside of Bo Levi Mitchell in general. Then a running back, James Butler, not listed on the depth chart. He's resting this week. So we will see Tyon Fleet Davis, who they recently brought back to the team and Sean Thomas Erlington kind of uh, both cheap options uh, Fleet Davis is not listed on DraftKings if you want to use uh, Thomas Erlington as a pay down option you could go ahead and do that at $2,500 in terms of the receivers that they're running out this week Tim D White is not listed on the depth chart you could also see Tariq McAllister kind of in that Greg McRae role where he might work a little bit as a wide receiver slot back and a little bit as a running back $7,600 could have some value there Duke Williams out once again Tyler Tonoski is out once again uh, we saw Omar Bayless practice in full all week with the back with his back injury, so he should be good to go. Terry Godwin's kind of the best wide receiver left, so if you want to play him at $7,200 as a GPP option, makes some sense, but they could end up resting him for part of the game as well. If you want to take some shots on some of these cheaper guys, whether it's Keandre Smith, Herji Maiala, Daryl Walker, or you know Chris Awuse Kosu, could definitely do that. They're all really cheap, so uh, it's going to be a very interesting week this week, like I said, with a lot of these backups playing. Moving down to Montreal, at least on their depth chart, they have pretty much all their starters listed. So Cody Fajardo should get the start at quarterback. If you really want to roll him out there, definitely could do that. Uh, how long does he go into the game? Will we see some Caleb Evans in this game? A lot of questions to remain to be seen there. 
William Stanbeck is listed as the starter at $7,500, so I do have him listed as a GPP option, maybe one of the better running backs actually playing this week. Have Austin Mack at $10,200, still listed as starting, so I'm going to leave him as a GPP option as well. Julian Grant did not practice all week due to his shoulder injury. Didn't have an injury designation listed. I believe he's on the depth chart, so he should be playing. Tyler Sneed, you know, if you want to take a shot on him, you could. Uh, Tyson Philpott is still my favorite wide receiver to play from this team, only up to $7,000 at this point in time. And that's kind of where we're at in terms of wide receivers. Mainly would be playing Austin Mack or Tyson Philpott alongside Cody Vajardo if I'm going that direction. And then for the Alouettes defense, GPP option, they might actually be the strongest defense this week just because they're $4,400. Seems like they're still playing a lot of starters and they might actually play some of their starters more than some of these other teams or deeper into the game than some of these other teams as well. Moving down to Toronto, uh, Chad Kelly did practice in full all week due to leg injury, but he is listed as the third string quarterback. Cameron Dupes will get the start, so I do have him listed as a GPP option. Do like the upside he presents this week, has a little bit of rushing upside as well. At running back, we see A.J. Alouette and Andrew Harris both listed out. Harris due to rest. Uh, Andrew Harris due to his knee, although he was able to practice in full a couple days this week, so he should be good to go for their playoff matchup. Uh, Daniel Odeboyo is going to be the GPP option here. Probably going to be one of the more popular running backs on this slate if you want to get to McMahon behind him at $6,500. does make some sense as well. In terms of wide receivers, Deveris Daniels is out this week. Uh, Curly Gittins remains out due to his hip injury. Uh, Demonte Coxey not on the depth chart, so he won't be playing this week. But Cam Phillips is back this week, was practicing full all week, listed on the depth chart. We'll see how far he actually plays into the game, though. So not really too, too interested in him from a DFS perspective. You know, probably the other three guys, David Unger the third, Tommy Neal, Dewan Brissett, kind of more popular there. Richie Sedini could actually get a little bit of extra run this week, too, you know, with them not trying to play for too much. Carlton Udaduzzi, probably mispronouncing his name. He's up, and so is Jeremiah Haydell. Both are not in DraftKings. So a lot of wide receiver depth here, uh, a lot of backup guys kind of figuring out who this is going to be the guy it will be the biggest challenge for this week. But probably going to get to the most David Unger the third, maybe the most Tommy Neal for myself personally. If you want to play the Argonauts defense, once again, all defenses are in play this week, but they're probably going to be resting a lot of guys on that side of the ball as well. Then on the opposite side for the Ottawa Red Blacks, Dustin Crum, GPP option. You know, if he's... You know, playing with pretty much a full offense against Toronto's backup defense or a lot of guys that are backups on their defense could be an okay day for him. You know, one of the main starters that is actually still starting at quarterback. Devontae Williams very much in play, a GPP option to $8,800, really playing well as of late. And then for their wide receivers, pretty much everybody is going to be playing in this game. I know uh, Mariner is not listed on the depth chart this week. Braylon Addison, probably my favorite at $4,600. And then if you want to use the Red Blacks as a kind of a pay down defense, they're probably still rolling out most of their main guys against kind of the backups for Toronto. So it could be some opportunities to be had there overall. But with that being said, just wanted to run down this as kind of a short, sweet, quick hitting video for CFL DFS for week 21. Like I said, there's a lot of backups in play this week. Going to make for some pretty interesting one. Not a slate that you want to go heavy on this week overall, but very much enjoyed making the CFL DFS content this season. Hopefully you guys all enjoyed it as well. If you have any questions whatsoever regarding CFL DFS for week 21, be sure to leave it down in the comments. Definitely do appreciate each and every one of you that have checked out these videos throughout the season. Season. We'll be back probably next season to do it as well. This year we did weeks, I believe, 4 through 21, uh, just doing it for the regular season, not really doing it for the playoffs. But if you have any questions like regarding playoff DFS and you want to ask it, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Coach Craig Sport and be more than happy to help you over there as well. But with that being said, that's all that I truly have for this video. If you are joining me for the very first time, First of all, welcome and definitely do appreciate you having you checking it out. And then if you are brand new or have yet to subscribe, please consider doing so. Definitely would appreciate it. Helps with the community that we're trying to build here at Coach Craig Sports, which is one that's truly for you, the viewers, helping you with your DFS. Like I said, this is the last CFL DFS video for this season, but I do have Monday through Friday NBA DFS on both DraftKings and Fandle. And then tomorrow should have my NFL DFS video coming out for both DraftKings and Fandle as well. But with that being said, that's all that I truly have at this point in time. Definitely do appreciate each and every one of you tuning into this video. All of you that have supported me for this CFL DFS journey throughout this season definitely means a lot to me. I hope that each and every one of you have a great rest of your day, no matter what day you're watching this on. A pretty good weekend overall and some great luck and CFL DFS for week number 21.